All right, I get a ton of uh, questions about skipping docks, and, and there's so many videos out there on it, so I don't know really if I do much different. If I'm on one of my favorite dock lakes, it's pretty close to my house. It's a place I can come out and get a few bites every time I go, so it's really good practice. There's a lot of floating docks, there's, there's stationary docks, there's metal ones, wooden ones, all different styles, lots of, lots of pontoon boats, just a, a good variety of stuff, stuff that's you can't get comfortable, you know, so that's what you need when you're when you're out here dock fishing. You want to be ready for anything, all the different angles and all the different casts you have to make. This is a Terminator Pro Series jig. It's got a rattle on the band, which I kind of like. Um, sometimes I'll put the rattles inside of my trailers if I use a bigger trailer, but for the most part, I'm using that rattle that comes with it. This jig is right out of the package. I'm trimming that skirt right to the hook like that. I'm kind of picky about my skirts. I will put my own, I'll make my own different skirts from time to time trying to match the crawdads and just water and different things like that. But that's kind of what I typically do with my weed guards. I spread them out like that. I kind of split them in two halves. It really comes through nice, doesn't get hung on much and uh, it doesn't seem to affect how it skips or anything like that. Can't go wrong with just these two colors black and blue, some type of a green pumpkin, craw color. My trailers might be a little different than, than most people. I, I make my own out of a flapping hog. They come with appendages all over the place and it's a really good Texas rig creature style bait. Cutting them down like that and making a trailer, it's just unbeatable. I love these things. Plus they're a little heavy. Anybody who uses Yamamoto Senkos knows that their plastic's a little heavier. See on the Pro Series jig, it's got a nice keeper on it. So I'm kind of pinching that bait real tight, getting it up on there. And that keeper will stick right out of there like that. So it holds it up real nice. I've got all my flapping hog trailers already cut. So it takes me about 10 minutes to cut 50 of those suckers. And then I'm ready for the season. Unless I'm at Champlain, then I'm ready for the day. <laughs> And there you go, perfect, perfect dock skipping jig. So I'm using 20 pound fluorocarbon 99% of the time for this. Never use braid when I'm dock skipping. And I tie it on with a Palomar knot. If you tie a Palomar knot right, it's the strongest knot you can get with fluorocarbon. This knot won't slip, so I'm cutting it fairly close. Just trying to keep it nice and compact. You don't want your knot picking up all kinds of debris. The reel, it's always the same thing. I want an eight to one. Super high speed reel. I want to be able to set the hook and that fish is a lot of times swimming right out of there 100 miles an hour under the boat. I want to be able to pick up that line, pick up that slack and get a really good hook set on them. Oh yeah, I use a 7-11 rod when I'm dock skipping. 20 pound advanced fluorocarbon from Suffix and that's pretty much my setup. This is an Envy rod. Omens are great. You can't go wrong. Uh, Fate Black, a lot of different really good rods from 13 fishing and what's cool is across their lines from their top of the line to their least expensive models um, you're getting about the same action so if you get a 7.3 medium heavy get a 7.6 heavy or a 7.11 heavy like this one you're pretty much good across all the lines let's get up here and and for the most part I'm staying way way back when I'm when I'm skipping docks you know the further away I can get the more velocity I can get and a lot of times you don't even need to skip you just make the cast but the more velocity you get you know especially today it's windy and rough and man the biggest bass in the lake get under the docks when it's rough you know you fish those real the rough side and the, where the white caps are even banging into the docks so you got to get used to to skipping in the waves and and it's not easy but it but it's just like anything else you practice and you'll get good at it that's my point of view anyway now this is another situation it's a boat lift, lots of boat lifts around where I live, where I grew up fishing. I don't wanna throw over those bunks cause there's carpet on them. So I just wanna make sure that I get semi in a straight line. These are good places to catch really big fish. On these lifts like this one here, you can see there's a cross beam. This angle, this 45 degree angle is what I like. See, I can get right in there and there was no fish there, which is surprising. But a lot of times I'm looking at a, at a dock like that and I want to just hit the, the juice of it. You know, I want to get that bait right in the middle of the darkest area of that dock. And when the water's clear like this, 
Those fish have come from a long way to get that jig. This is a loose line technique. I mean, you're gonna be dealing with loops in your reel anytime you're skipping, so that's just part of the game. A lot of times I'll just, you know, between docks, I'll just flip one way out there, clean out my reel, just make sure you don't have any loops because it affects your next cast. So just try to keep everything as smooth as you can. Nobody home. Skipping in the white caps. A lot of times, you know, I'm not fishing the bottom either. These docks are really shallow. I'm more or less swimming it, like skipping it in there. Usually letting it hit the bottom the first time, but then I'm just kind of bouncing it and hopping it. Most of the time I'm just, you know, twitching it, swimming it, trying to keep it just off the bottom. A lot of times, you know, they're gonna bite it on that initial skip. As soon as that thing settles down wherever it's gonna fall, it stops skipping and starts to sink. A lot of times that's when they're gonna get it. And then you'll have the dock that is impossible. <laughs> so you need luck on your side every once in a while. The only other little thing that I do that, that does make a difference, and I think if you try it, you'll be impressed. I take the, a lot of line off my reel. It makes it a lot more manageable and easier to cast. And you can see like, I don't know, three eighths of an inch of my spool is actually showing in there. So um, <clears throat> less line makes it a lot easier to, uh, to skip. But that's one thing that's night and day is, is not overfilling your spool and actually underfilling it like this. It's, it's just a lot better. You have a lot, lot less line to be looping and getting in your way because you are going to be dealing with loops and tangles and backlashes fishing like this. There's just no way around it. It doesn't matter how good you are. My reels, you know, I have no tension at all. I have all, always have my centrifugal brake system at zero. So you really want to learn to rely on your, on your thumb because you really got to let it fly with confidence. A lot of times when you're fishing like this, there's people everywhere, like just standing around. And you're like, should I do it? Should I do it? Like you don't want to be hitting people's docks. So something that was cool for me when I was younger is I had a couple of buddies that owned docks on Chautauqua and they let me beat them up. Cause you got to get used to, you got to have confidence. As soon as you lose the confidence, that's when you start hitting stuff. And then, and depending on where you are in the country, when you start hitting stuff, you can get shot by a little yard cannon. People really get mad. I'm gonna get one in there. Tricky. Tricky cast right there. Now, am I gonna be able to get him out of there? Probably not. But I'm gonna try. I got him. It's a big one. It's a big one. <laughs> Oh boy, he's heavier than I thought he was. Come on in here, boy. Oh yeah. He's a fatty. So that is dock fishing, skipping, sliding, the Terminator jig with the flapping hog. Nice chunk, fatty. Yeah, look at this one. Come on, buddy. <laughs> oh, look at that. That was cool. Not a giant, but another fat, chunky one on the Terminator jig. So that's my dock skipping setup. A lot of fun. Hopefully these tips help you get better at skipping docks and sliding that jig. Lots of fun. Lots of fun. Cool. A lot of fun.